What's going on? Move the Mouse here, back with episode two of the How To series, updated for 2020. In the last episode, we got off to a successful start. Now we're already having some issues, though, and I want to talk about that first. So, if we see here, we've got people complaining about power problems, and power problems always start at the edge of your grid. So, the buildings closest to the power plant will be fine, the ones that are further away or further down the chain will be affected. These are not because they're on their own separate part of the grid. But for these buildings that are, we've got to get them more power. And if you remember in the last episode, we turned down the budget for electricity. Now, if you really want to come in here and micromanage it, you can. I'm going to go between 50, 75, and 100, so I don't have to keep coming in here as often. But that will bump our electricity back up. And in fact, if we go into info views and look at electricity, we might catch it, but probably not. So it went from in the yellow to well into the green. So that should have us covered for a little bit. But before you start dropping in new power plants, always good to double check and make sure that your budget isn't turned down. If these icons don't go away right away, sometimes throw it on three times speed. It takes a minute. So in the last episode, we got off to a successful start with our city here, doing some basic residential area, a basic downtown commercial. And I'm, you know, thinking small, small town downtown, right? But we separated our uh, industry over here along with our coal power plant and got our water all set up on its own way down there by the river. In this episode, I want to talk about what we unlocked in the first milestone. There's a couple important things here. So one thing you can do is give yourself time to think about all this stuff. There's a lot to grasp, a lot to take in, especially when you're first starting building cities. I still overlook stuff when stuff gets unlocked. I'm trying to power through and speed my way to the next milestone, but it's easy to overlook really important things for your city. So pause the game when you unlock a new milestone. It, it's a great, a great way to kind of take stock of what's happening in the city and come up with your next plan. So let's start right at the top and talk about taxes and loans. So if we hold Y or triangle or on PC, if you look for the uh, money stack there, we can come into taxes, budget, and loans here. That's, I guess income and expenses too. Let's not leave them out. Uh, but taxes, we can affect the zones that we have access to. We can't affect high density because we don't have high density unlocked yet. But we can crank everything up to 12% because as long as you're meeting basic needs, that's kind of the sweet spot. Any lower and you're losing money, any higher and people start to complain. We will set it much higher later on in the episode, but 12% is a nice sweet spot. I almost always forget, but when you unlock high density, commercial, residential, and office space, make sure and turn that up to 12%, but that's not until we get to 7,500 population. Now, if your milestones are a little different, it's because you're probably playing on a different map, and these numbers that it takes to get to the milestone might be slightly different depending on what map you're playing on, but what you're unlocking is the same. So that was taxes. Back in there, we've got the loans tab and we can take out a loan. So it's gonna cost us $21,000 to borrow $20,000 over 52 weeks. We can pay it off at any time and you can't have more than one of any particular type. So we'll unlock these other loans as we hit population 1,000 and population 20,000. But that's all pretty straightforward. The focus of today's episode is garbage, healthcare, and education. So let's talk about them in that order. If we go over to the water, electric, and garbage tab, that's where that's hiding, you've got a couple options here. Now, if you've just got the base game, you've got the dump or the landfill. And basically landfills send trucks out, collect the garbage, and it does create pollution in the area. It will eventually fill up and need to be emptied and it won't send any more trucks out until there's room. Now, how you empty that is either to another landfill site or to an incinerator that you unlock later in your playthrough when you get to a population of 7,500 in this case. We're playing again on Diamond Coast. Numbers may vary per map. Now, if you've got the Green Cities DLC, which I'm hoping you should have, and if you don't, it's free right now on consoles from May 21st to May 28th, go ahead and grab it because that will get you the recycling center. Now this has a noise pollution bubble in orange and a pollution pollution bubble in purple. So you can see here, we don't want to put it, you know, right on top of our uh, citizens, 
but this is a better option because it doesn't fill up like the uh, dump does. It can get to the point where it can't process any more garbage any faster and it isn't effective, but it's never going to fill up and it will allow you to move the building. A dump, once it has one bag of garbage in it, can't be moved until it's emptied. And you'll find that's the case with some other buildings that we'll talk about later, like the cemeteries. So if it's an option, go with the recycling plant. In this case, I'm going to tuck it way off up here in the corner. I'm going to overwrite a business to do that but that'll kind of keep the pollution as far as we can off this main drag with the space that we have on this map. If you do a landfill site, it's the exact same mechanic. You're plopping it down and you'll notice that the, the roads turned green when I dropped the recycling plant in there. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but places we can't get to, right? Like the opposite side of the highway and for that matter, down the highway, um, notice that that's grayed out. So as we plop down city services, you want to try and make sure it's as green as possible because it also indicates if there's problems with a route. Let's drop in healthcare next. For this, I'm going to go fairly central to my city. You can see kind of where the road is green is kind of where it can cover. If you're getting into the gray, it's going to take a long time for that vehicle that comes from this building, in this case, an ambulance, maybe it's a police car or a fire truck. It's going to take it a while to get to where it's not green. They will get there eventually, but if it's especially in the case of a fire truck, this building's burning long enough and it can't get there. Well, that's going to be very problematic, especially if it's your power plant. So as soon as we unlock fire, one of the things that we're going to want to do is make sure that our power plant is very well protected and insulated against fire, because if that burns down, your city doesn't have power. If you're low on money and can't replace the power plant, your city's gonna go bankrupt really fast. So of all the things that you wanna protect from fire coverage, which isn't what we're talking about today, uh, make sure make sure it's your power plant. So here we've got our clinic and this will take care of six citizens in our city, but healthcare wise, it'll tell us average health, healthcare availability. Eventually we'll have to deal with death care and other things, but we wanna make sure that we're providing at least some hospital coverage to make people healthy and happy. Now, you'll notice that we've got some pop-ups coming up, and that's good because we want to talk about all these things kind of as they happen. Your city's going to have problems at one point or another, and these pop-ups tell us something about the problem that's happening. If we go into our inspector tool, we can click on this, and we can see that it's not enough workers. The ones that are kind of further along down that path and have had not enough workers even longer go into the red. And if it's too long, they get abandoned. And we will definitely see that here, and that's totally okay. The problem that we're having is that we have businesses here, but we've also got a ton of residential demand. That big green bar in the bottom right is totally full. It's always good to have some demand, but in this case, we don't have enough people for all the jobs that are out there. So we're kind of imbalanced right now. So what we can do is give ourselves a couple quick blocks here. And we'll zone all that in with residential. In this case, I'm just going to go over to the fill tool because that should be a nice and fast way to do it. And we'll even turn kind of our main street area here into some uh, residential. We can kind of mix across the street here. Maybe do a little commercial over here because we'll, we'll need it. It'll eventually fill up. Um, if we hit play on three times speed, we'll have some people start moving in. And while that's happening, don't forget to water them. The houses, the people, whatever you, whatever the them is, make sure and water them. So what you can do is if you've already done a nice grid with that $440 worth of separation, you can just extend that when you need to and cover the new areas of the map. So that's really useful to have a, a nice tight grid like that when it comes to your water pipes at least. Now, as more people move in, some of those people will go to work and hopefully some of these pop-ups will go away. But I can tell you for sure, because we kind of left that so long, that some of these are going to abandon. And that's okay. We can talk about that when that happens. Now, we talked about garbage and healthcare. We didn't really talk about education yet, though. We're going to drop in our school for our citizens. And this is the same as kind of other city services. When we plop it down on the road, you get that green bar that kind of shows where it works where it's effective. So we kind of want to aim for right in the middle of this residential area. It should, it should span pretty well to both sides. It's not perfect, 
and we can try and move out less houses, but I'm going to drop a school right in the middle of that block. You'll notice I have two options. This one is from the Green Cities DLC. Again, we'll break out all the DLC content into its own separate video. But if you're watching this when it came out, Green Cities DLC is free right now on PlayStation and Xbox. So if you don't have it, go get it. If we go into info views and look at education, we'll be able to see across elementary, high school, university, and how the coverage is, who's getting educated, who's not. Right now, all the houses that are in red are not educated because we just put a school down. In fact, let's, uh, let's hit play. Um, but they need time to go through elementary. And once they graduate elementary, they will go to high school and then they'll either go to work or university. And we can affect that with policies and availability. But generally, having a high educated population is better. So there's a couple game mechanics that work with education level. The more educated your Sims are, and for the new players out there, yes, they are called Sims, but it's with a C. Before anyone runs down in the comments and says, this isn't SimCity or EA, believe me, I know, and I've heard it before. But the better educated your Sims are, the less garbage they produce, which means less pollution. They work at better paying jobs, which means more office space, also less pollution, both noise and ground and water pollution. And the more money they make and their businesses make, the more they pay in taxes. So you can actually have more money in the bank by educating your citizens appropriately. But that milestone for our city is actually complete. That one's fairly easy to talk about. They do get a little crazy. We'll try and talk about each milestone as we unlock them, as we build up our city. But speaking of milestones, there we go. This is what we'll talk about in the next episode. We'll get into districts policies. We can take out a second loan now. We also have the ability to drop in emergency services in the form of fire and police. And if we've got some of the DLCs, some other stuff starts to unlock as well. But we'll talk about that later in the series. For now, we're just worried about getting the city off the ground, taking it bit by bit, step by step. Uh, I've got series and tutorials on all kinds of topics, but I'll be trying to update this one for 2020. Stay tuned for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you did enjoy this, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe for more and consider hitting the bell to get notifications for updates in this and other series. I've got a Let's Play going on right now that's happening on console, so tune in there if you want to see a long-form build of a large city. Follow me on Twitter and join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion. Great group of people over there. We talk about cities whether you're playing on consoles, Switch, PC, whatever it is, whatever you need help with, fantastic community, fans of the game, fans of the channel over there. So join us. If you'd like to support the channel, links to that and all those other things in the description down below. Until the next episode, when we'll talk about fire, police, and all sorts of other things that are really important for your city, more than you know sometimes. Until then, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.